Today we're going to be talking about one of the leg muscles which is especially important for those of you who enjoy running to keep fit. It's one of the muscles which helps to lift your heel off the ground during push-off and then keep the sole of your foot in the correct position to make sure it lands optimally onto the ground again on landing. What muscle could I be talking about? Since you saw the title of this tutorial when you clicked play, you already know the answer to that question. That's right, today we're talking about the functions of the fibularis longus muscle. As always, before we learn about the various functions of any muscle, let's take a few moments to remind ourselves of its anatomy. Many of you know that the fibularis longus muscle is also sometimes referred to as the perineus longus, which comes from the Greek word perine, which has the same meaning as the Latin word fibula, which means pin or clasp. Both terms are perfectly fine to use. However, we've noticed the term fibularis longus seems to be the more common of the two in most textbooks, as well as the official name listed in the Terminologia Anatomica. The fibularis longus muscle belongs to the lateral compartment of the leg, which contains just one other muscle, the fibularis brevis muscle. These muscles are also known as the everters of the foot, but we'll discuss more about what that term means in just a short while. As its name suggests, the fibularis longus is the longer of the fibularis muscles, as well as the more superficial of the two. It also arises more proximally along the shaft of the fibula compared to its smaller brother, the fibularis brevis. The fibularis longus muscle has its proximal attachment, or origin, from the head of the fibula, as well as from the proximal two-thirds of the lateral aspect of its shaft. The long muscle belly continues almost the entire length of the leg, where it then tapers off as a long tendon, which wraps around the lateral malleolus of the fibula in a pulley-like groove known as the lateral malleolus sulcus, which it shares with the tendon of the fibularis brevis. The tendon of the fibularis longus then continues along the lateral aspect of the calcaneus bone below a small prominence known as the fibula trochlea. It then continues within another well-defined groove located on the infralateral surface of the cuboid bone, which guides the tendon onto the plantar aspect of the bone. From here, it then crosses the plantar aspect, or the sole of the foot, where it attaches to the lateral aspects of the medial cuneiform and the first metatarsal bones. Like all muscles, the fibularis longus needs a source of innovation to tell it when to contract and to do its job. In this case, our nerve of interest is the superficial fibula nerve, which is the branch of the common fibula nerve. Now that we're familiar with the origin and insertion points of the fibularis longus muscle, we can identify which points this muscle acts up on. The first is the ankle joint, also known as the talocrural joint, which is formed by the articulation of the medial and lateral malleoli of the tibia and fibula, with the superior surface of the talus bone. The next joint of interest is the subtalar joint, also known as the talocalcaneal joint, which as these names suggest, is located under the talus, at the articulation of the talus and the calcaneus bones. And finally, as the long tendon of the fibularis longus reaches right across the plantar surface of the foot, it also has some effect on the small joints between the tarsal and the metatarsal bones, which are known as the intertarsal and tarsometatarsal joints. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.